What does Jesus mean when he says that the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few? Because it's, it's usually a gospel that we, we read and think, well, there's, there's not a lot of vocations. And we read the gospel and we think, well, it means, well, we need to pray for more vocations because he says that the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his har harvest. So it's referring to asking God to send more helpers, I'm assuming. But the harvest is abundant. That can be kind of, I don't know if that's very clear, because if the harvest is what we're supposed to gather after we've planted and after we've watered and after whatever plant we've planted and watered has grown its fruit, we're supposed to collect the fruit. That's what a harvest is. A harvest is is picking fruit from a plant that's already produced what it had to produce. It's usually it's usually time after a long process of preparation. So he's saying that there's fruit out there to be picked and we don't have enough people to pick it. If he's saying that the harvest is abundant, so there's a lot of fruit or any kind of produce that comes from plants. And we need laborers, so we need people to pick the fruit. Well, if he says at the end that the kingdom of God is at hand, and I'll tell you it would be more tolerable for Sodom on that day, for that town, after the description of sending out the 72, and them going to the towns and preaching. And when he says that it would be more tolerable for Sodom on that day for that town, a town that rejects the 72, the kingdom of God is at hand. So the fullness of time has come. The revelation of God is complete because he's spoken and he's fulfilled what had to be spoken and fulfilled, he came. So the kingdom of God is at hand. That means that it's all here. It's all been prepared and it's here. The fruit of this harvest is Christ himself, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is at hand. He is here. So what does that mean? That means that our job is to pick what's already there and bring it to the people. So his Paschal mystery, his life, death, and resurrection, his passion, is a massive fruit. And it's, it's life-giving. And it's there. It's, it's all there. The harvest is extremely abundant because there's a... a, a a limit, limitless number, like um, an infinite almost quantity of grace that's just waiting there for people. And it's kind of mysterious because if it's all there and it's all been done, the kingdom of God's here, he's done it. It was a long time coming. It was all prophesied. The prophets, the Old Testament, it is all prep the whole preparation to come to this moment, it's and it's like just this explosion of fruit. Um, it's like the, the prophecy of Ezekiel is like the river is just like exaggeratedly deep and everywhere where it passes there's fruit trees and it, it even makes like what's salty and bitter fresh and drinkable. So it's like this super abundance of, of fruit and life. But it almost seems like if there's, there's nobody to gather it, nobody's going to receive it. That's why I think it's it's a mysterious, a mysterious gospel that he's that God, in His plan, has done everything, and He's now waiting for us to respond so that that can make it to other people. It's very, uh, it's very powerful in itself. Just that thought of of what it means to do apostolate what it means to possibly potentially be the only life source for some people, the only light or life source that a certain person might come across 
could be you. When you're sitting at home thinking about your problems and I don't know, like your situation and everything that you have to do or you haven't done or usually you, it's usually what we do. We just think about ourselves. But like when, when you're thinking about yourself and your vocation or whatnot, it sometimes maybe it passes that we don't actually stop to think, well, maybe my my job also is that I'm supposed to be a laborer. Not just like send ask the Lord to send laborers to the vineyard. It might not just re refer to like praying for vocations to the priesthood. You know, like, well, we have to pray for the the master of the vineyard to send more laborers because we don't have enough priests. If there's so much fruit out there and there's so much grace, it's not necessarily referring to just priests, although priests are like the number one source for sanctifying grace, obviously. But it could even just be something as simple as as getting to know a person and then seeing if they've they've ever encountered Christ, for example, something that simple. And it's a, it's a pity to see or to think that maybe this fruit could just die. It's the worst when you when you go through all like the process of what it means to like cultivate, and you come to the the, the month of of harvest and you harvest what you harvest, but like you see that that some of the fruit falls to the ground and it's just like rotting or you can't get in everything or or some of it's get, it just gets damaged it's like it's a, it's it's a shame because it's so beautiful to actually see fruit of your labor of like what was a seed and what had to be watered and needed sun and it needed weeding and it was time it was just there and like pruning like the whole process and then you just actually see the fruit but when the fruit doesn't get eaten or it doesn't fulfill it's what it was supposed to fulfill it is it is sad and it's frustrating. It might be the frustration maybe that, that, that our Lord was experiencing when he said you need to ask because we need laborers. We need people to bring this, this harvest to other people. And it's also similar to the image of Our Lady, St. Catherine Labore with the miraculous medal because she also had like rays coming out of her fingers, like coming from rings and the rays were were just falling kind of like in vain and saint catherine asked her about it and she said there's just all these like the rays coming out she says they're just like all the graces that were there but no one was asking for so it's kind of like this image of a, a super absolutely super abundance of grace because at the end of the day that's what it is the fruit of the harvest is christ himself and it's it's the life and of grace that's just there. It's just, it, it, there's so much of it. It's a full harvest. It's just like, it's just waiting there. And we do have to ask for help, but we also have to become conscious that there is a, that there is a lot that we have that we need to be conscious of and we need to be giving because it is, we are in time of drought and in time of famine, which is really just asking you just ask the most basic Q and A questions to to the youth nowadays, and you just see how much of a of a, an ignorance there is out there, and how much there is. We are in famine. One of the boys asked me yesterday if, if you had to be gay to be a priest, or or I said the word hell. I think we were just doing like a freestyle, and I mentioned the word hell, and one of the boys said, "I can't say hell because I'm a priest." It's just like like the ideas that they have are like. Or the misconceptions or the ignorance. It's just it it is it is like a desert. It is an absolute desert, an absolute famine. And like the littlest thing that we have, maybe we don't even think about it, but the littlest thing that we have is a lot. So we really need to be be un like just dumping this harvest onto them and just like unloading the bundles and baskets in truckloads of fruit and produce and water and like it's just we are like walking um warehouses of of nutrition and fruit and and everything everything that they're absolutely dying and starving for so it's, it's good to con to make, become conscientious of that and uh just don't think of priests all the time when we read this like the harvest is abundant and the labors are few i think every single baptized christian is a laborer because we have at our hands the fruit and we have the harvest. So may we be apostles and may we bring this harvest to such a starving people. Amen.